Uh, How goes it, gentlemen? I'll tell you what, the bottom of the barrel was fucking scraped this week. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, you know what? We always say that, and those always end up being some of our best shows. Mm. Mm-hmm. Tell you, should have did breakfast cast. Mm, I just finished eating my breakfast because I wake up at like two something every day. Yeah, mm. t- I was gonna say tell me about it, but this morning I actually uh, slept into a reasonable time, eleven o'clock, and woke up like an adult. Kind the of. The fuck is a eleven o'clock? I know. Uh, I-, I say an adult, an adult for Portland wakes up <laughs> at eleven o'clock. I f- I feel like I don't know. I wake up most of the time at six in the morning. Oh wow! Now, now, especially since I started school again, it's only mm. you know. What the hell are you doing? It's fucking six a.m. I, I mean, gonna... it's seven for y'all. So I go to sleep at like seven forty-five ish. So yeah, I, I'm up to all. I, you know, I'm up to all hours of the night. I mean, because you talk to me yeah. sometimes at like four in the morning. Like, hey, Joel, what's up? I'm like, oh, hey, my, you know. my fucking pills and pre-workout keeps me awake. Like all fucking like, I'm just sitting there. I'm like, I need to talk to someone, but there's no one here. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Yep. Uh, I, I don't know how I do it, but it's just like 7 in the morning sometimes. It's like I feel I have more hours in the day, though. Yeah, th- uh, that's what I miss, too, when I sleep in too late, where I'm like, damn it, I had so much I wanted to do today, and it's already 4 in the morning. But, but I feel I get a lot of work done in the night. <laughs> There's so much I want to do. I want to break my own fapping record. Or I, <laughs> it's true. Uh, I want to eat breakfast twice. Uh, had some delicious oh, yeah. hashima browns. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, yeah. That sums everything up. I, I feel I'm following the tradition of like the CBC misspell stuff. Oh no! What'd you misspell this time? <laughs> the, the thing. The. <laughs> yeah. I saw that. I'm like, I didn't see it. Well, I'm watching the video. I'm like, okay, he put the Minecraft teaser in. And it says the comic cook cast. I did. And I'm like, not. I'm like, well, the B is pretty far away from C. I don't think he messed it up. So maybe that's a theme for the no, episode. I mean, it's not that far. It's only totally like right there. Plus, I showed it to like uh, two other three other people, and they didn't see it. I'm just like, what? How come y'all didn't tell me? Or maybe they did, but they just didn't tell us anything to make no, you stupid. This is what I love <laughs> about the comic book cast and our fans is that we read comics, which means we can obviously read, and yet when the time comes, our spelling's not great, but we're so equally poor spellers, we can't catch each other's mistakes. This is beautiful. It's so true. I just, it's hilarious, though. I, I started dying when uh, I, I saw it like after the, after the fact, too. I was just like, oh. In, in 2015, do we need to hire like a professional proofreader? We need that... a yes. <laughs> we need a scribe, a proofreader. We need everything. <laughs> a scribe. I like, you know, let's talk to Crystal Master because Crystal Master is basically our official, unofficial freaking uh, note keeper anyway. <laughs> hey, can you check if I spelled comic book cast right? <laughs> I can't believe I did it. Uh, like I spell it right every other time, and then this one time. Uh, it's all, it's Maybe funny. just copy and paste it every time to make sure it's correct. That... Ill- <laughs> Illuminati, man. Illuminati. Uh, it's just like, we. there's a tradition at the ZBC that we really misspell is. some of the easiest stuff. Uh, I, actually, you, you would be proud, uh, Joe. Someone actually uh, corrected me on my last Ghost Rider review on my pronunciation of the name Guerrero. They're like, no, yeah. gu- it's like Guerrero means blonde man. You're saying it different. You're saying it like blonde woman. I'm like, oh, wow, I learned something. So, so you say like, when it, it sounds like an O, like Guerrero? Yeah, Guerrero. I guess yeah. I was saying it with an O. I'm like, I did not even know there was a, di- I learned something today. It, it's okay. People usually say Jamie instead of Jaime uh, or like Jaime Reyes. Well, I, I, I was saying it like I was trying to say it like the wrestler is what I was trying to ah. say. Well, like, that's what I picture it was, so I don't know. Only <laughs> scumbag tactics, lie, cheat, steal. Oh, so I shit you not. I caught up with Red Hood, right? Oh, God, yes. How good is it? <laughs> so, number 36, it's like, Jason's like, I gotta get the space. Yeah. And, and then mm-hmm. it's like... 22 pages of him just monologuing it's boring. <laughs> Issue 37, way better because it's the or- retelling origin and how like Arsenal met Green Arrow. Oh. Which, which is actually pretty cool within itself. Like he's like a smart kid and stuff that has like everything going for him. So I'm like, yeah, they, they, they changed that around a little bit. They made him more like Tim Drew. Right. right. In the new 52, but which, yeah. Which I'm like, okay, this actually worked. It wasn't bad besides the inner monologuing, which completely like derails the comic. Yeah. But then I get to annual number two, Ooh. which 
is them drawn in almost chibi form. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I fucking shit you not. Fighting Venom steroided up. Santa's reindeer. Santa, a fat redneck <laughs> woman who thinks she's Santa. Oh, what? And they steal <clears throat> Santa's jet-powered sleigh. Dude, that freaking that dude. Lobo, that Lobo Christmas comic from back in the day had more self restraint. It was one of the best comics I think I've read in the last like two months. I was like, you know, this is so stupid. I can't hate it. Like but, they knew what they were doing. What's so, hilarious like, about that though is that like clearly that's going for comedy. When I talked to James Tiny, he said his big pitch when he took over the book is that he wanted to do crazy over the top comedy. He wanted to do stuff like that every week, and they told him no. It, it actually ties into the overall story of them going into space too so i was like oh i love how they explain it so it's like it, it actually perfectly fits i was like you know what this is the first issue i actually enjoyed of this entire fucking series uh, are you having red hood stockholm syndrome Armin? are they beating you down and yeah. beating you down red hood's just, Scott favorite now. Is just hold, chain me down he's like you read it till you find it good <laughs> it, it's okay i mean i know the feel like something that everybody would say is bad and he started liking justice league 3000 mostly because the blue beetle booster gold relationship i love <laughs> it's just so. It's just I like it reading it, and it gets to the actual Justice League, and I'm like, yeah. Well, well, I never considered Justice League 3000 to be bad. I just thought it was kind of boring, it's, and the fact that yeah. they were clones and not their own characters kind of put a damper. Into Wait, that's. That, I thought that was Future's End. No, that's no 3000 is different. It's it, yeah. it's just I, I'm not like it's. I guess it, you're technically it's not that bad. It just gets boring, and is I just I I'm reading it just for the Blue Beetle Booster it's Gold story. Very, it's very very dry science fiction is what yeah. it is. Like like the driest of science fiction, which uh, doesn't quite gel with the whole superheroiness of it. And, and again, too, I think the problem with Justice League Three Thousand is that when we, we all saw the pictures of Justice League Three Thousand. The stories we wrote in our head of who these characters were and what they meant was way more interesting than what they delivered on. Yeah. yeah and then yeah. there's something about like Camelon now. And oh, I'm really? just like, um, okay, like, are we going back to King Arthur and all that? And it, <laughs> it's just like, I, I, I'm not really in, I'm not really into that, that story, but I'm reading it just, I swear, just because I'm, I want to know what Booster and Blue were up to because they're, you they're gotta just gotta get stupid. your Beetle fix. Dude, they're so they're so uh, they're so stupid when they do stuff. It's hilarious. I, well, I love that. And you know there are harbingers of like the whole old continuity and yeah. convergence yeah. coming back because I'm like they are the old Fifty Two Booster Gold but, and Blue Beetle. It's weird. They don't really. I mean, I'm pretty sure they're gonna tell you how they got there sooner or later. But I mean, there's. It's <laughs> you weird. rely too much on explanation in comics. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but it's just like what did in this continuity that. Blue Beetle not die? It's like... I they, guess. It's like... It, I mean, they tell you how they got there, but they don't tell you, like, what kind of continuity well, it is or anything. D- did you read the uh, Future's End tie-in for Booster Gold, Joe? Did you? There, wait, there. I thought there wasn't. Oh, the one for... Um, no, yeah, Booster I, Gold got his own solo tie-in I, to really? Future's I thought End. it was... Oh, oh, I thought you said Blue Beetle. Never mind. That's okay, no, yeah. no. Yeah, 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 yeah the Gold. one with, like, the tiger on the front. Yeah, to where he yeah, was literally – he thought he was jumping around in time, but he was actually jumping to different universes. So yeah, he went, and in the, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, he went to Gotham by Gaslight. He went to Commandi at Earth's End and everything. I I liked it. It's, it's just – is that is that like connected? Is he at the center of this whole like – It certainly seems that way because at the end of that book it said to see the conclusion yeah. to Booster Gold's adventure, go to where futures and worlds end. Oh, oh Jesus. So it's like convergence. Yeah, so they're literally like, look, you want to see what happened to well, Brother I and Vanishing Point? He's having his own like convergence thing. Booster is as well. Uh, the thing I like that they're uh, having a convergence is they're bringing like a uh, – Plastic Man and the Freedom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Elo, cool. Elo Brian, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Love that dude. He's I, such a fucking scumbag. I, I don't, I don't know. I, I'm, I, I don't know if there's a big fan base for like that, but I, I like it. But people who like Plastic Man like him a lot. I yeah. definitely count myself yeah. amongst the Plastic I, Man I, fans. I don't cool. know. We made it like nine and a half minutes into this podcast. We haven't talked about any news. That's yeah, pretty good. Because we're, I didn't know we're we actually talking about <laughs> comics for a change. It ain't that I'll just thing. I'll just take this and throw it over to Blood Sweat or I'll just <laughs> keep it here. You know what? Here we go. Let's open the show by introducing uh, who's all here. Of course, your host, Armin. I'm here with Matt. Yo. Joel. 
Yeah, pr- president of the Eel O'Brien uh, Appreciation <laughs> Society. And Joe. I'm the vice president of that. I'm like even the fan. Just like, go, go. So I'm going to do something different since uh, we have a bunch of podcasts. And I know a lot of people listen to the main one and they know, don't know the other ones exist. Sure. Uh, in Down below on YouTube, you're going to see where the, normally the Patreon logo is. See, even my cat wants to weigh in on this. You're <laughs> Your gonna cat see loves it. Patreon. <laughs> You'll see an annotation for every other podcast we have for the last week. You can go check that out, see if it's something you like, and then you can listen to that junk. Yeah, we uh, do I mean, quality. Quality. But, I mean, we also spread around to very different topics, so people of like that, can, that like a lot of different stuff, you know, they have uh-huh. a podcast to listen to. Absolutely. And, you know, and p- part of one of the things we want to do for the future in 2015 is more structure. You know, we want to actually get because we do have so many great shows now with so many of our friends and, you know, whatnot going on. We want to make sure that they get out on a good weekly schedule and whatnot so you can get your comic book cast podcast fix regardless of what day of the week it is. Right. So we're going to work on a time schedule, which uh, means all sorts of better things and more series coming from a bunch of people, which uh, we'll talk about some later date. But. What we're here to talk about is, of course, uh, a few pieces of news, and I stress few. <laughs> so, um, hey guys, mm. uh, oh. did anybody commit any suicide this week? No, Ooh, not Tom that I Hardy know. did. Oh, <laughs> oh, I guess he did. Oh, oh. oh yeah. Okay, uh. can, can you really call it a suicide when he's just going on to other I, stuff? I feel like it, it's. A loss because I feel he's Tom Hardy. You know he's a great actor, but I felt he would have been Tom. He would have been Tom Hardy in that. It's uh, I, I would have liked to like he, Tom Hardy like the general type. He has the look for it and everything. I, I thought he would have did great. I'm definitely sticking with what I said originally when they announced the cast for the movie. Yeah. I said everybody's going to get undermined for Will Smith and Leto. Yeah, and yeah. I, I'm going to have yeah. to go with that's why he left. I mean, I, just look yeah. at it. There's no way. Tom Hardy gets a bigger role than Will put my son in this or make me the center of attention or I'm not signing a contract Smith, right? Yeah, at least it's Mr. Deadshot. July 4th weekend, yeah. I, at least it's Deadshot. Deadshot is supposed to be one of the main... True. You know, that's the thing. And Joker, I could see if they're pushing it a lot it's because he's the villain of the yeah. thing. It's something like that. And, I, I mean, I, I get that part. And also there's that. There's oh, there's always a different bunch of reasons. There's because, you know, Will Smith maybe is getting more screen time. There's because he's overlapping schedules. He True. didn't expect that. There's always going to be many reasons. But I, he would have did great. I, I sad to see him gone. Everybody, yeah, I, it was a loss. I, I really wanted to see what he brought to Rick Flagg. Because, you know, Rick Flagg is, of course, a character who I champion all over the place. I'm sure people are like, Rick Flagg, who the fuck is that? And so I thought it was nice. Nice that they actually cast like a big name actor like Tom Hardy, and especially because you know Tom Hardy maybe didn't exactly get to play the most comic accurate Bane ever. It would have been cool to see what he could do with a lesser known character like Rick Flag, but that's just me. And he brings that military like look to him. Like when you saw him, it was like, all right, I can I can see him playing Rick Flag because he has yeah. the look to it. It, it would have been the attitude. I'm not hating on it because you know when the act- actor goes out, I was like, oh, he was going to be bad anyways. He yeah. wasn't going to no, do I good think at all. Yeah. Oh, but... yeah, he would have been great. But, I mean, the replacement they maybe have for him, that sounds well, amazing as well. Just me or to me, it seems like when I look at the entire cast, right? Tom Hardy in it is the only one that didn't need the role in the movie. Oh, definitely. Like yeah, Will man. Smith, I you know, his career's it. been like, uh, okay, he's had some duds. Like, Leto, he's had, you know, like he, one big movie, but like he hasn't he, had that. going through a, a career evolution right now. Right. Yeah. Like, you know, uh, Margot Robbie, you look at her, like, she you know, out, outside of Wolf on Wall Street, not a lot of people know. So, like, Jake, Jai Courtney speaks for himself. So. <laughs> like, oh, I look at this it. and I'm like, well, Tom Hardy's the really the one that was like, yeah, I'll do this. It kind of looks fun. And then he's like, yeah, fuck it. I don't need it. Like, you know what they need to do? They need to, instead of, you know, what is it, Tom Hardy, they need to have Rick Flagg played by Sam Worthington. So Worthington and Jai <gasps> Courtney can meet on screen. Oh, fuck, and they can fuck have, you, and they, sure. And they can have a generic Australian off is what they can do. Can we, <laughs> while we're add it add my boy tara kitchen there somehow uh, at right. least he has true detective yeah i was gonna say kitch is gonna be on true detective he he's yeah. gonna be fine he, he gets out of that doghouse for now 
For now. <laughs> for now, you know until he fucks up and he's but back in it. It's like, you're right, like, a lot, Tom Hardy was the only, because I feel like a lot of these people who are joining comic book movies now are really t- t- for what, like, you know, if they want to do it now, they want to make an impact in that community. Here, whether you liked it or not, everybody knows Tom Hardy as Bane. Right. Yeah, well, everybody everybody knows what's his name, um, Chris Hemsworth, his latest movie. Like oh, that, yeah, Black what Hat. What is it, Black, Black Hat? Yeah. yeah, that like you know, it's not doing so good in reviews that like he was in an interview. He's like, "Oh, I am so blessed with my Marvel contract." Yeah, because really? I'm like, "Yeah, you are." Yeah, I, people are I, like, "Oh, he plays a hacker in this movie. Does he hit people with a hammer?" No, well, fuck off. <laughs> I, I mean, even Robert Downey Jr. Like he's Robert Downey Jr. But even with the judge, it didn't do as Robert good. Downey Jr. Saw that's not his name that carries him. It's Iron Man that carries him. And so. that's a really interesting new time in Hollywood where we are right now, where the actors don't matter nearly as much as the costumes that they're wearing. Which yeah. is the exact reason I keep telling people, when they recast Wolverine, sure, people are going to care until the next guy, just like James Bond, okay? Yep. People are like, but you can't replace Daniel Craig, he's the be- Oh, this guy's fucking great. All right, move along. I, I mean, look at the Joker. Every time. Yeah. Uh, the jo- like, Heath Ledger's the Joker. Everybody loves that. It, I know yeah. it's... And then they, they cast a new one, and sure, there are people like, oh, no, he won't do the same. But it's, you know, once he does it, people are just going to be like, oh, okay, this is a different, you know. Right. Just like everyone loved Jack Nicholson before him, and everyone loved uh, Cesar Romero yep. before him. Yeah, it's it's so... It's, people it's love the, the character. character, yeah. Yeah. And it's just, it, it is, we're, we are, there's no more of that star power. Sure, there's people who have, like... A name, Robert Downey Jr., The Rock, but really is the character, the concept, the well, story. I don't even know how much The Rock carries anymore because Hercules was a yeah. No, but it's like, I, I'm well, talking more Ratner like movie, their so. presence in the world. I I know, I know true, the true. movies they probably won't bring as much anymore for that style star power, but I think a lot of these people still have a presence in the yeah. world. Well, I, I, again, I would dare say, you know, The Rock or Dwayne Johnson or whatever you want to call him is one of those few, you know, like just can draw people with his name. Just the fact that they're like, oh, he's in this. He's such an amazing personality is the thing. And I am drawn in by his charisma. Just five more years till we see him at Shazam <laughs> or whatever. But or I Black think with the, Black with, the Her- with the Hercules movie, it's just I, I think Matt's seen it. And he I, I think you said it was like good, right? Or no. It was, it was all right. It, yeah, it, was, it wasn't it, awesome. It, 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 I thought it wasn't going to be as violent as it was, and it was it, it was yeah, pretty violent. See, it did like even when I saw the trailers, it was like, yeah, I mean it's the rock killing stuff or something. The people, it's Here's not going to be what, amazing. Like, I think what turned people off for you know Hercules was like, so it's like a Clash of the Titans, but not as visually interesting. <laughs> nope. Yeah, <laughs> like, that, that was it. Yeah, and, it's, and G saying Clash of the Titans, the remake one, was visually interesting. Even that, I'm like, okay, fair <laughs> it, it really is about the story and even the brands nowadays. Marvel, like, you know, Ant-Man is going to make a big hit because it's Marvel. You know, it's mm-hmm. brands. It's really, it's changed from just star power straight oh, up. Yeah. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Eh, weird times. Living so in. let's talk about something else because this week's everybody's favorite bucket of salt uh, Latino review delivered us a scoop, motherfuckers. Scoop. Uh, scoop. Apparently, Captain America is going to die in Civil War. Which, which we've all been theorizing for a little bit because there's mm-hmm. so much, you know, into that Brew Baker storyline. And it's like, well, where do you go after Winter Soldier? Well, Brew Baker killed well, him. I think yeah, what, this is best summed up by a Hybrids video where he did a nine minute old school vintage Armin style rant where he just literally calls the dude an idiot and he's like here's what you did you're just telling us shit we know but making it sound like a scoop and I'm like yeah because yeah, anybody can predict this so why the hell is like every website like deadline sourcing Latino review for saying what happens it, in the comic you know why because uh, deadline and the Hollywood reporter and all those they, other yeah. places they're not nerds. They don't. They don't read, read the comics. Book. Yeah, a lot. they don't know exactly. What's going on. I'm Dude, pretty the, sure they have one guy, but he's exactly. not in charge of everything. <laughs> Absolutely, that's the thing. Now, like they have one guy now into all these like Hollywood places. Latino review, like it, it, like Latino review, and I would say Badass Digest too are like yeah. the voice of the young people, like of the mm. people who grew up reading comics and actually understand, you know, what's going on and can make pretty good guesses about what's going to happen. 
by examining the source mm. material, and it's because of that they're like, well, if Latino Review says it, then it must be true. They know what's happening in them funny books. Hey, Johnson, you hear what the Elmo you must say it's going to happen in the Marvels? Is Batman coming? Yeah, report that. Basically. That's that's basically it. Again, you know, like the old dudes who run, you know, the Hollywood Reporter and Deadline and all this other stuff, I would not be surprised, like, yeah, them comic books, you know, the Batmans and the Spidermans on the mm. Justice Force. <laughs> the Justice Avengers, you mean? Yes, the Justice Avengers. Like, See, I, I like Justice Force more. Oh, Force. Mm. No, no, force so, of the Justice Force. saying, if you're an old person reporting, get the fuck out. <laughs> well, you know, that's the thing. That's why there's a lot of resentment for all these new geek properties. Not even just comic book stuff, like young adult novels and whatnot. Because all, like, the older journalists and whatnot are like, I don't understand these things because I'm old now. I'm old. Table flips. <laughs> what is this, a WWE match? Yes, Are it is. signing a contract? <laughs> I swore in 2015 it would be the year that I pushed table flips as the new thing. And I especially oh. like old person table flips, just very limply. Ah, I haven't drank enough prune juice to flip this table. Why is Magneto here? <laughs> uh. Oh god, that's that's actually a pretty good segue talking about Magneto, about who's not going to be oh, in the yeah. next X Men thing. I felt like yeah. that was I felt that was to be expected. They were only yeah, that one yeah. movie, but I guess it's kind of confirmed because nobody really said they were or were not going to be in it. So now they said they weren't. Yeah, I mean, well, it makes I, I, sense. Isn't it going to be taking place in like what the eighties or something? Something like but that. But it also it also makes sense too because like it felt. It's not going to be the ending. It's going to be the end of the trilogy for the younger cast, and yeah. we know like um, like I, I feel the the three ones they're trying to cast the young, for Apocalypse like Young Storm, Jean, and uh, Scott. Those are the three that are going to take over the next X Men trilogy. Well, does it feel a little weird for anybody else because it's the last like movie for the original trilogy of first class members, right? Yeah, yeah. and most of them have expressed interest. I mean saying they don't want to come back like they want to move on to other projects like they're kind of fed up with the whole comic book thing okay so and, and they all blew the hell up too i mean jennifer lawrence right. is oh, gigantic. Yeah, like nicholas holt is really goddamn big now michael so like, yeah. i mean i'm looking Fassbender, at this yeah. and i'm seeing what they're saying so it's the end of their trilogy this movie also marks the beginning of the next trilogy ushering in you know like uh storm young yeah. jean gray yeah, psychops yeah. And then, of course, Hugh Jackson's probably going to stay as Wolverine throughout who the fuck knows how long. <laughs> of course he is. <laughs> For as so, long as they need him, he won't be called back to his home planet of so Australia. Where, <laughs> what exactly is the point of this movie like don't get me wrong i said it's probably like the movie i'm most excited for in 2016 because i fucking love apocalypse right like i'm super excited for that movie but i just don't get it like what's the marketing scheme on this like to keep the brand going as long as possible here's my problem right you recast the young x-men and let's say the next movie moves on a couple years after because it has to because you have this new young cast yeah Mm -hmm. If Fassbender and, you know, McAvoy aren't back as the characters who they, we just saw in the last three movies and they recast them, then you have the same problem. You ran into recasting First Class yeah. and, you know, and the Wolverine, which they were having trouble getting certain. Like, it's just there's this time discrepancy now. Well, like, what's going to happen with them? You would yeah. hope that by this point in, you know, remakes and sequelizing or whatever else, that they understand that if you just write a good script and focus on interesting characters, you don't need a Wolverine. You don't need an Xavier or a Magneto. They're nice, but I mean, hey, give someone else some time. You know, show us how cool Storm can be. Show I, us her history. I mean, look at that. Look, because, yeah, we're saying what's next. You're they're They're, uh, they're prompting like they're gonna focus on the new young three like we said before for the newer trilogy but also i'm assuming gambit's gonna be in this and maybe right. a little bit and that's like to go off to his own movie deadpool's having his own movie and right. then um you have like wolverine's gonna do his i'm assuming it's gonna be his last one hopefully and it's i get what you mean like oh it's this big apocalypse thing what can you really do next it's well, like, i wonder if cyclops is gonna get fucked over again <laughs> <laughs> What, what if I, they I killed? Hope they've learned. Oh, mm-hmm. what if? They, no, I was gonna say, what if they kill uh, the main? Like, yeah, I, it's weird. It's that dumb, but I think I heard this somewhere. It was like Mystique, uh, Professor X, and Magneto, and yes. but, like some reason they kill them, and, and the new trilogy has to take over the school, and they do all this. That'd know. be interesting, but I, I don't think they're 
I don't think Fox involved. is willing to go that out of the box. I mean, you know? it, I don't know if they're going to want to focus again. On, I, I, I mean, they probably will, but I don't know if they want it. Like you're saying, the first class problem where they recast it again for like the Mystique, the uh, like Professor X and the Magneto. It, are you sure? Like, I don't think they want to do that again. So maybe they do something with them where they kill them off and the new trilogy has to like the new kids have to, you know, take over the school, like the do the new villain. Incident. Right. Huh. I mean, it, 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 it would be cool. funny, too, because, I mean, obviously they learned the power of the time travel retcon. Yeah. It would be interesting if they learned too, where it's like, look, guys, this is comic books. You can kill off whoever you want, bring them back whenever you want later, and people won't care because that's just the way these things go, especially in the X Men universe. Yeah, because I, I just feel like they're trying to focus on these th- these new ones because I, I just think they want the new a- the new young actors. They're looking like in the mid twenties, so they can lead the next franchise trilogy for it. Yeah. Yeah, so that's and, why I and, think this, and you have they to do don't, something. Yeah. And hoping they don't blow the hell up like <laughs> the other people did, so they got to keep paying them more and more. Uh, uh, that's why whoever the hell they signed to young people, which is why I don't think we've heard any contract, because they should be shooting a movie pretty soon now, oh, is yeah, because they're knows. probably trying to walk in three to six movies. And yeah. probably mostly unknowns, I would argue. Yeah. I think that's the problem they had before. It was like, oh, we didn't do six movies for uh, Michael Fassbender, James McAvoy, and Jennifer Lawrence. Now they're too big for us. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, they're probably doing that. And now I mean, they want oodles of dollars and two sandwiches. I, yeah. Fuck them. They ain't getting no sandwiches. <laughs> We're yeah, not no, made of can... sandwiches here at Fox. <laughs> uh, it's like three X-Men Fox, like, Fox movies in 2016. So True. I'm super excited for Fox's offering. Damn, so. Deadpool, Apocalypse. They seem to have like, gotten their shit together in the last At least for X-Men. X-Men you know, kind yeah. of. <laughs> Uh, so speaking of getting the shit together, um, let's talk about other Suicide Squad news, which we kind of glossed over. Uh, apparently some of the story details, uh, Joker locked up majority of the movie. I did not actually read these. I know some people in the Facebook were like, oh, Joel, we're reading, you know, the supposed Suicide Squad leaks. We'd love you to come into the Facebook page and talk about them with (laughs) us. And I'm like, well, maybe I don't want to spoil the movie for myself. From what everybody says, they did. Because uh, I haven't seen it yet, but everybody's just saying assault on Arkham. No, which <laughs> yeah, it sounds basically. exactly like that. Which hey, assault it, on Arkham was great. Yeah, I liked it. I liked the movie. It's, cool. I haven't seen it yet, so I can't say. We need um, Arminius to watch it. <laughs> listen, it, I, I've I've said this many times before. If it's somehow related to Batman, I try to ignore it. Yeah, I could agree. <laughs> Just overplayed, man. I, I don't even think like they're gonna have. I mean, they might reference Ben Affleck, Batman, and Suicide Squad, pro- most likely, but I don't think he's gonna be in it. There's some uh, manner of bat creature in Gotham. Have you heard about it? It's a bat that walks <laughs> like a man, man. Well, apparently, Gerald Edo said that Batman is dead. Uh, Does I don't Superman know if... snap his neck? I don't. I, <laughs> I don't know. If we want to read too much into that. He, he faked his death again, as he often does. Uh, I, I must be Batman, the urban legend. No one must know that I exist. I exist in the shadows. But but yeah. you're a member of the Justice League. You save the world. I do not exist. I, I, I know it's like this is like Joker's like one of the main ones, and like some people could get tired of him. But I felt like Jared Leto could really like make. I, I mean, it was either him or Jake Gyllenhaal that like would have been great because Jake Gyllenhaal would have gone crazy for the Joker. Hell, Jake Gyllenhaal was basically the Joker in Nightcrawler more. He played a hardcore psychotic and he was Mm -hmm. frightening as hell and he didn't even need clown makeup. He had a camera and he was scary. Yeah, that that was him. I I think he's going to be way different than Heath Ledger, which I'm glad because I kind of want to get away from that. Yeah, but pretty much the you know the story details sounds interesting. If it's yeah. if it's what they say it is, I'm like yeah, it's interesting. I mean, I made a video well, about it, so you can check that out. I, um, no. I mean, if you go to the assault and like if you do that and you go into the prison and everything, there's you can have Easter eggs full of oh, like, exactly. villains well, in there. One of the things they said is yeah, you're gonna get to see you know you see King Shark and apparently. The bio, you know, the weapon that they're transporting is actually Enchantress herself because Lex oh, Luthor yeah. wants her for experiments. I'm like, that sounds pretty good. It, it sounds interesting. It sounds like because I, I thought they're like, oh, they're all going to be like in one team, Harley Quinn in there. And it's like, oh, no, maybe it's like Honestly, the other like, way. This Suicide Squad quote unquote leak is the thing that's got me most excited about the movie because if it is what they say it is, 
it sounds like it could be like the guardians of Marvel where they're like literally yeah. like, okay, let's seed all these things, you know, make these little Easter eggs, you know, in the background so people can connect these dots. It's like, it, it sounds like they, you know, like they're actually trying with this one. So I'm like, yeah, I'm willing yeah. to give this one a try. You know, it's funny. I'm laughing at all these mentions of King Shark, like you said, for King Shark was never really a big part of the Suicide Squad until the new 52. He was more of a member of the Secret Six that they're just like, oh, well, people like him, so we'll bring him over here. He, I guess. He's a fucking shark, Joel. Get with the time. He, what it, the his sequel? greatest quote is, I'm a shark. I'm a sharky shark. Uh, Joel, the sequel or the follow up to Suicide Squad, the Secret Six. Oh, yeah. don't, don't play with my heart, Joe. <laughs> don't you dare. <laughs> don't you cool. Cool. Raise my hopes. Uh, that, that'd be cool. I think they're cool too. But uh, Suicide Squad is, I think, the most. Ima- like there, there's a. Um, I just can't imagine like so if they do toys for this or like even at McDonald's, like hey, uh, like mom, mom, can you give me the Suicide Squad toy? It's like yeah, I've, what, I've been Jimmy? This joke forever there. Where how are they going to market this? To, or how are they even going to pretend to market I, this? To I find that hilarious. If if they keep the name at least Suicide Squad or somewhere in there, I just I find that hilarious. Like the whole if little kids say I want to see the Suicide Squad, mom or something like that. Just, God, you know. If we all lived together and if we could all, like, shoot comedy sketches, that would be a great one where it's like, hey, little Billy, what did you get in your Suicide Squad Happy Meal? I got Deadshot. He's a down-on-his-luck deadbeat dad who kills people for money. He's my favorite. (laughs) What did you get, little Susie? I got Harley Quinn. She's an abused spouse with psychosis of her own. She puts too much faith in other people. (laughs) Okay, now, speaking of that, uh, what do you guys think, realistically, the ratings for this uh, type of movie is going to be because we know that rated R movies do not seem to work in theaters. I don't like, think sadly not. I think it's going to be hard PG-13. PG-13. I, I yeah, feel a lot of these PG-13. movies are that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which, which arguably, as we've said before, you can actually get away with more in PG-13 now than you ever could before, like back in the 80s. Uh, if you do it R, you're... You're alienating the teens that are really going to go hardcore for it. Like, oh, damn, that Suicide Squad. Yeah. You know, yeah. who play Call of Duty. And <laughs> play the Dudas. I mean, of course, they might sneak in, but it's not. there's a 50-50 chance that they get caught. That's so some he- radical kids, bro. <laughs> See, <laughs> sneak that's in, what- risk their lunch money or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> Do, do kids even sneak into movies anymore? I, I, I would think so. I, I, I think or they just pirate them. Yeah, I, I was gonna say. Oh, that too. I, I just think it's like theater hopping or whatever. I, I can kids just show up. Oh man, my mom thinks I'm going to the box social at the school, but I'm going to see box Suicide Squad. <laughs> Is this the 1950s? The box social, and, the, and then they rode their carriages through town. Listen, I'm I'm old enough that I don't even know what the hell I'm talking about anymore. <laughs> And then uh, their next stop was the sodding bee. <laughs> <laughs> and then they rose, raised a barn on Thursday. You, you know what? I if would, you go to the box social, leave a comment below and tell me what you do there. And I'll, I'll make they, sure I see. I don't think they do Sadie Hawkins dances anymore. I feel I like that's we have a, those in I'll Canada. Oh, and I think that's more of an American thing. Yeah. yeah. I thought it was a cool idea. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, but, but back to Suicide Squad and <laughs> Call of Duty. I think that would be a great uh, way for them to try and market. It'd be like, hey, get your Suicide Squad map pack. So instead of playing Blanty dude, I, McSoldier I dude in Advanced Warfare, you play Deadshot with his wrist well, guns. You, you know what though? They should sell like uh, the for the toys like Captain Boomerang's Boomerang, Deadshot sniper. Yeah. Ah, that that'd really be like <laughs> I think like kids that. would buy that. Like that. I'll stuff. tell you this right now: the marketing for Suicide Squad toys is going to be so small, you're going to have to fight people to buy a I toy bet. of anything besides bet. Joker. I, I, I bet. Again, I keep saying for the toys, if they do them, it's not going to be Suicide Squad. It's going to be Task Force X. Oh yeah, yeah, I can definitely see that. But I'm just saying, like, imagine it's like, oh, I got De- I got Deadshot sniper against like Captain America's shield. It's like, yeah. oh. <laughs> Do you think they change it to something like, I don't know, Villains United Suicide no. Squad or something? Uh, I, I don't know. I, I just don't feel. Uh, go You'll have it Batman in the title. That they're going to throw suicide up onto a poster, right? And like, yeah. here's something yeah, I want to try to focus on. Like, the other night, Shan and I are just watching a bunch of, you know, older movies and cartoons and all that. And I. There was. I can't remember what the hell we were watching, but something felt very out of place. Um. It was something involving like just a kid and like his parents and it felt very awkward in this day and age like in the 90s 
it, it was t- totally socially acceptable. I don't remember what that happened. I think like the parent might have grabbed the kid and just like dragged them away. Oh yeah, yeah. If yeah, you yeah. were to do that in a movie today, everyone would be the up movie your ass would about fucking it. Fucking get scrutinized. It'd be all over every website. It's like you know. Oh yeah. It, it, I got what you're saying. It just. It, I think in the eighties, nineties, Suicide Squad would have been the ultimate marketing name. Yeah. But like today, you just. It, the, the world is such this weird, oh, we're sensitive and proactive, you know, and we don't want to, you know, put down anything. Like, it just feels so well, off that I can't believe they're going to stick yeah, with that well, name. Well, the thing is, is that, you know, it's like, uh, especially online, you know, there's always, like, the mod Flanders of the world. The people are like, <laughs> won't, won't somebody please think right. of the ch- No, that was Helen Lovejoy who says, <laughs> so, won't someone please think of the children? See, I, I know my Simpsons. I caught that. I- I'd agree. Like, it is. It's weird. in this time. It's like suicide on a poster everywhere. It'd be weird. Task Force X, and they say Suicide Squad in the actual movie, then I think that'd be more plausible. Right. Like, Task Force X. And then in the movies, like, the te- uh, like call it where the are. I-, I like how they said it on the on the TV show for Arrow. Like, welcome to the Suicide Squad. Yeah, I like rap song. Yeah, I just think if they say it like that in a way, or if, they, if that's even the tagline, like if it's Task Force X and then the tagline saying, welcome to the Suicide Squad, I think that'd be pretty cool. They, right. they just have to include that somewhere, like tagline, yeah, yeah, like, movie. To me, it just doesn't seem right to, you know, do it like that. And it, it just feels weird. And like, it'll be one of those scenarios where the movie's coming out and I don't know, God forbid, and you know this happens every day, someone in America commits suicide or someone slightly oh, more famous, gosh. the backlash to that movie will it's automatically focus great. all their fire on it. Oh, oh my gosh, it. you're right. We saw it happen, what is it, after the theater shooting that, uh... That, 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 uh no. Uh, no, 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 well, well, obviously that's one too, but we saw yeah. it, uh... What was it like after the whole like uh, Dark Knight Rises theater shooting a bunch of well, other also movies that gang like yeah things. American Gangster whatever that movie was yeah oh that was, yeah. yeah no it, it wasn't yeah. American it was some it, it was some mob yeah. mob squad or something. yeah mob, yeah something like that it was it was gangster a very squad. forgettable movie was the uh, Gangster Squad thank you yeah Gangster it was, Squad it, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was ironically a very forgettable and not very good movie anyway <laughs> but yeah. But yeah, I get what you mean. It's like if even one little thing happens like that, it's just it's gonna be blown up. And I mean, yeah. they always say controversy makes money, but I don't know if they want to take it that far in controversy. Right. You know, right? <laughs> it's that would be a little too much. I mean, if it was caught that, it'd be like, oh, I gotta check out the Suicide Squad. But it, it is. We it's trying to be PC nowadays, so. I, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't even say it's just political correctness. It's even just like you know, it's it's just the weirdness is what it is. I, yeah, I, I think it's a combination of a lot of things. Like it, but still, I I think they will definitely say Suicide Squad in the movie. I, I, I st- now that I said it, I just want that tagline like "Welcome to the Suicide Squad." That'd be so. You, you say it cool so line. lyrically and musically. I feel like you're gonna break it down. Welcome to the Suicide yeah, Squad. Yeah, are you trying to get, gonna go, go with this far. movie? Oh, yeah, rappers. I, I want, I want uh, Walworth to walk up and be like, welcome to the Suicide Squad. And suddenly the background in one of the cages is Diggle. He's like, yeah, yeah, getting Diggle with it. Yeah. Like, what the fuck <laughs> is that? <laughs> oh, it's like, oh, that's that's Diggle. We don't talk about him. It's featuring the Amanda the Wall Waller. Oh, oh my God. Like <laughs> the rappers right there. M- Missy uh, Elliott has a guest pitching a wrestling verse. movie now with the Dude, Suicide Squad? I-, I feel like we're pitching like a, a like a rap group right now. Like what dead, that Deadshot sounds like a rapper name nowadays. The Captain Basically. Boomerang, maybe not. <laughs> King Shark? Dude, that's totally a freaking rapper name. He's a joker. <laughs> I'm going to go copyright that right now. <laughs> but, but, but it's not spelled joker. It's spelled Joka. Uh, <laughs> Yo, we got uh, the we got the clown prince of the mic, Joe Cuss, stepping up here. Oh, uh, dude, we're Is basically he a juggalo. <laughs> He's basically a. You're right. I forgot that clown rappers are actually a thing. Dude, if only Sean was here, minorities, because he's um, I think he's illustrated or uh, something like that. I'm too graphics, or he's illustrated gangster. I'm too graphics. We figured out our names. Fix an illustrated game. I like it. I like oh. it. All right. So uh, what else? <laughs> since we're done with the Suicide Squad, we talked it to death. Let's talk about something else in the DC universe, which is Reverse Flash. Mm. And apparently, none of the theories going around that are the big ones are correct. Yeah. Huh. What are the it's... big theories of of him? Um. Oh. I well, would say just like the obvious one where it's like, oh, he is Reverse Flash, or no, maybe someone else is. Apparently, so it's not Harrison Wells. Okay, I, 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 I didn't, I didn't it, think it was. I thought that was too right. easy. Uh, so with that, I would guess it's not Eddie. No, I don't get. think it's Eddie either. Really? So, I don't know what... 
Barry's dad? No, I feel like that's you know what? That, that's something I had in mind too, but then I was like, uh, no, I can't see that. Well, uh, you know what it would be then? Then maybe it is that just Eobard Thawn is his own person from the future, man. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, Harrison well, Wells is saying, like, oh, yeah, I'm Reverse Flash. Everybody says, I'm Reverse Flash. But they never said Eobard Thawn. They say Reverse Flash. You know, right. so r- we all know Eobard Thawn's the main one. Professor Zoom, you know. So right. I, I, I like to think he's the main one. So, you know, but it's I, it, there's probably other ones because – there's this whole backstory too that's gonna happen soon. Like I forget which episode. I think it's 16 of the Flash. They're gonna see what happened that night that Barry's uh-huh. mother died, and it's gonna. The way they said it though, I think it's interesting because it's in the eyes from Reverse Flash. They didn't say oh, wow. from the eyes of Harrison Wells. They said the eyes of Reverse Flash. Mm, so that there's is interesting. something. Yeah, it's like well, if he says he's Reverse Flash, so does that mean it's like oh no, we didn't say it. they even had to go out and say, I meant, I didn't mean Harrison Wells, I meant Reverse Flash. So you know it's something uh, there. Yep. It's and, that mystery. And I was going to say, too, let's face it, I mean, obviously Harrison Wells oh, is yeah. a construct. He's not, like, a real person. Like, they even no. say, when Joe's investigating him, it's like, huh, that's funny, you only showed up, like, six months ago, then all this shit happened. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> I, I felt like he time-traveled to a specific time there. You know what I mean? Six well, months before. What, what if he's, like... The body Yobard Thorn inhabits. Oh, so it's oh, like a future possession thing. You know what I like though was that they they put them um, the the flat reverse flash suit like we all saw the the mid season finale where he put the the little whatever machine and put it on the costume and it gave him yeah, the ability yeah. to use super speed because I don't with Professor Zoom right it wasn't that he had the ability to run fast like the Flash it was that he got the suit. I could do it, wasn't it? Or am I? Well, th- well there's a lot else? of different versions. When, yeah. Cause yeah. It's like, you know, there's a lot of reverse flashes. Then you get into your professor zooms and your cobalt blues and yeah. all these other characters with similar powers and are kind of reverse flash. Like, shit, there's even a new guy in the comics right now, Daniel West, for yeah, Christ's sake. Yeah, the uncle. I always thought he was going to show up sooner or later once uh, Wally actually shows up because I think, because I thought it was fine what he, the costume looked we'll see, like, cool. I still find it interesting that Eddie, when they first cast the character, right, and the yeah, call yeah. she went out, and then when they first announced him, they said Eddie, a mysterious cop with no history, yeah. that shows up to work in you know freaking on uh, Central City. I'm like, so they were clearly pitching that somewhere down the road, My but they decided to scrap that. I'm like, will they go back to that inevitably? Like, I always said that because just replace Daniel West New Fifty Two with Eddie, and it's really just he's like it. He just gets the powers of Reverse Flash, right? And it, it, he's just causing mess, and he can be close to Iris, you know, because that's what Daniel West was, clo- like uh, the uncle, the brother, but this could be like the boyfriend of Iris West. And you could just have him be a Reverse Flash and fight the Flash, but it'll just be different. I mean, it's so confusing, time travel and all that. It, and it's it's like, very Jeff Johnsian is yeah. what it is. Like, this feels like reading an actual Jeff Johns Flash story, uh, which and, it, which is honestly a compliment, honestly. Yeah, and there's more to come, apparently, because they keep saying, like, oh, yeah, more time travel stuff. And there's this big twist with the Reverse Flash you won't see coming. I'm just like, oh, man, I'm like, I want to see this. Like, it's very conf- it's confusing already. Let's see but, what happens next. Like, the way I see it, I think they've dropped quite a few red herrings, and they've yeah. left quite a few doors up. And, uh, like, clearly they know that the fans know what's up, and they're watching this with, like, you know, a, a fine comb going over it. I, I think they're trying to throw us for a loop more than they're mm-hmm. trying to throw, like, just your average watcher for uh-huh. a loop. Is what yeah. it is. Like, like, I think they're literally playing games with guys like us at this point who are looking for all the little stuff. And, and it's weird, too, because didn't we see in an episode... That Wells was actively trying to recreate the Flash speed, like he had taken the yeah. blood from that one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, which he makes, still has it. He still yeah, which makes it. me think, yeah. like, well, if he took it, why would he take it if he was already reverse Flash? Ex- that's what, exactly what I'm saying. I'm like, this makes no sense. Like, And then wh- why did he put the machine, if he was that reverse Flash and he had the blood of Flash to be able to have the powers, why did he have to use the machine to put on the costume to get the super speed back? It's it's confusing at times. It's like, oh god, I just really want to know. Same here. Again, you know, it's it's interesting too. And uh, what I remember in our original review for uh, yeah, the was Flash. it for, for for the Flash episode for the mid season finale, where I'm like, wait, are we supposed to think that Reverse Flash is so fast 
that he can actually that Wells can sit in his chair, go do reverse fl- flash stuff, and nobody notices. Yeah, exactly. Ooh, you you yeah. know what I you know what I think though? It's um I think we all had this theory. Uh, it's it's from the, even when we did the review too at the very beginning where you saw the pilot and you saw a red and yellow, and they even say in the mid season finale you saw red and yellow when the flash and reverse flash right. were fighting. Cisco said that, and it did, we we said that oh it could be flash. Fighting reverse flash and reverse flash kills his mom. And what if that night? I don't want to say because I feel like it's too early for Barry to go back time traveling. Well, they're going to so, introduce time traveling at the before the end of season one. So. Right. Yeah, uh, but I feel like it's too. I, I feel like reverse flash. We can see him time travel, but I just well, maybe I he can do it by like, accident. If you go back and watch the pilot episode. Watch it in like you know 1080p mm-hmm. or 720. Just don't watch it in like you know standard definition. And uh, notice again when he says you know. When Arrow says, I think the lightning chose you. Yeah. Watch that scene again. Watch it a few times and notice how there's a red streak that happens across the camera. Mm. Now, we know in the comic, you know, they went to Rabbit, it's like, oh, the Flash was the lightning ball. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, cool. I swear to God, they will play with that. Dude, I, I honestly think I would, I would like that. That'd be pretty cool if he is. He's the one who did it all. Wait, but, it, it'll just be a crazy ass fucking paradox within itself. Well, well yeah. Jeff Johns loves that idea. I love and because it his, love And because his fingerprints are all over this show, I'm gonna guess that's the way they go with it. Because they didn't just put that in there in the beginning. Oh, it chose you from right. Stephen Amell. Because I think it's on a larger thing for this whole series. And I just, I mean, I, I know I said it's too early, but you're right. Like, they are introducing time travel. So what if, like, when episode 16, I think, is when we see it. What if, like, the episode before the end, Barry accidentally time travels and to and he gets, and we see him at the end or whatever. Like, he's right, there the night his mom like that, died yeah. and he's fighting. That'd be well, crazy. You know, speaking of all that, let's go to our final topic of this episode. And that is going to be Supergirl. Yeah, that's I, right. I didn't. I didn't read whatever it was. I forgot to. It's so, bullshit. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Matt. This is, this is the one that I'm like. There's no point to this series existing. Like, oh, I so, always said they should have just started it because even Greg Valenti, they should have just started. Uh, well, connecting. Here's what we're getting. So, she's going to be working at the Daily Planet okay, along yes. with Jimmy Olsen, her sidekick. Yeah. I've, okay. I've, here's the uh, here's the whole thing. She is extensive. She is almost exactly Clark Kent, just female. Ah, yeah, exactly. That's what I assumed. Oh, that's too. unfortunate. Yeah. But Superman does exist in this universe. He's just not there right now. Is he off yeah. in space? Is he looking for more? That was my guess. What the hell's yeah. I he so I guess yeah he's off in space somewhere. I think that's a, that's what they're doing for the Titan show too, where Batman's in it. He's just right. Not gonna be and there. don't forget, it's a crime procedural. Jeez. Yeah, I don't get that. That's why it's. I it feel when they were saying that, I said it felt so contradicting. That's why I was gonna wait like a bit more. And feels I, like I didn't you're limiting yourself super yeah. hard. Yeah, that's why I I always said since Greg Berlanti said he wanted to or he could have it connected, it would have a reason to exist if it connected to Arrow and the Flash. Right, except now with this news, it can't possibly connect because yeah, the Superman Flash and Arrow it. would be like, so Superman, he saved the Earth like a dozen times. I know, it, it feel weird if you have Superman in there, it's like, well, how come they didn't like recommend it, see it on a paper or something? I, I They can kind of, like, I feel you, you'd have to really stretch it. Oh, yeah. You'd have to really, really, really stretch it that if Superman was there. Because if Batman was in it, it's easy because he's in his own city. But Superman Maybe he's is like the life. mutant of the X-Men called Forget-Me-Not. <laughs> Anybody know about him? No, no yeah, I see, forgot about him. You've forgotten him because his power is to be forgotten. And it's, apparently he's been on the team since the original team was conceived. Oh, that's <laughs> right. But but no one knows him because literally. Because his power is to be forgotten. I don't know if y'all are messy, but I just. No, no, no. That's no, a that's, real fucking thing. This is a real guy. I shit you okay, because I don't remember. I don't know too much of the X-Men. Yeah, you don't know because he's an X-Men. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a pr- that's a pretty amazing power, actually, to always be. I mean, it would suck to have to live with that power, but you could basically do whatever you want and get away with it because no one would remember. Oh, yeah. Phoenix Marie's asshole would be wrecked. <laughs> oh, but you could never make friends or fall in love, though, because everyone but would forget you. But you can be rich, Joe. You can <laughs> but, be rich, get that but, money. <laughs> but what's the point of getting that money when no one remembers that you got that money? <laughs> that is true. Yeah, but I'll constantly flash it in their face. I'll be like annoying people when they just have kids. <laughs> yeah, you know what? They're going on with her mean sale. Like, you could go up to any porn star. They won't, for- they won't even remember you. They'll forget you. You can have all that. It's like... Uh, what's you the saying? Pray you're hung. What's the saying? Uh, 
Uh, I, I for, damn, I was, I was trying to remember saying only if Sean was here, minority telepathy. Where's Sean? <laughs> minority telepathy. <laughs> Sean should know like what I was gonna say. It's like some old like world so, star quote, but ah, I forget so it. Back, back on just so quickly to end it with Supergirl. Um, here's what really ticks me off about this series, right? Yeah. More so than anything. So Supergirl's taken on the mantle after Superman is gone. I don't know, fucking to Kinkos for three seasons, right? <laughs> He's just up at the freaking uh, what is it, Fortress of Solitude, just painting the place. <laughs> so here's my thing: those motherfuckers robbed me of after ten years of Smallville, of him putting on the suit, flying around, doing all this shit. After I saw the character build up and grow to learn responsibility, how to do right, and everything, you know, by his father. So now I, I don't get that. You know, satisfaction. Instead, I'm gonna be like, "Well, you super it's fucking good to the new girl. You gonna learn the powers?" And I'm like, "Get the fuck out of here." I, I don't see why not, since um, Arrow and the Flash they weren't gonna be connected to the DC cinematic universe. I don't no. see why they couldn't have just kept the Smallville going live screen. You could have had a right? Justice League spinoff. You could have had a Teen Titans spinoff in there because they had a Titans comic. And yeah, like they they. I think they ended the season. It was like season eleven. It took like two or three years. They ended it already, and I think they're doing season twelve for the comics. But like, there's some stuff like Constantine was on. There's a ton of there's like this uh, yeah. like their version of Justice League Dark. You could do all this stuff. All but you no. boys in your Smallville. Smallville was great. I, you should the fuck up. <laughs> Smallville boys good. love Smallville. I mean, I, I know y- I, I'm the only one who really likes Arrow, so I, I'm okay with that. But I just would have loved if they would have kept it going. I know why. I think they tried to keep it going, but Justin Hartley didn't want to do the Arrow spinoff yeah. because out of uh, out of respect for Smallville and what they did there. And I'm like, well, I mean, isn't that the point of spinoff? Like to respect the show that kept going, like kept, like yeah. still have it going. But he was all like, no, I don't want to reprise it. I think the ending of Smallville would have kind of not made sense yeah. since Chloe's reading about the story of how Clark Kent became Superman to her kid. And I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> so he's you're a comic? The book clubs now everybody knows? Yeah, it's like, did he tell his, like, everybody he's Clark Kent or something? But it, it, it's <laughs> cool. Hey, hey like, guys, it, FYI, I'm Superman. <laughs> but it, it had, like, I, I liked a lot of stuff. They had, like, everything built up. They could do so much with it. And, of course, they have comics, but... It's not the same. I wish it. I I love Tom Welling. He's probably getting his career back. Uh, I think he stopped making sandwiches. <laughs> oh, think, he'll be right up there with Jai Courtney in the Suicide Squad too. I, I've been saying for the longest time you should have him in the Flash since you have um, um since you brought back um who do uh dang who did oh Brandon Routh yeah so you brought but have <laughs> him on the Flash and I I don't know I I say um uh what's his name um Captain. Is it Captain Adam? No. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. There's a Captain yeah, Adam. Yeah. Captain. Yeah. I feel like he has to look for it, and he could. You yeah. could pull that off. In no. That. We got to bring back Dean Kane from the dead, right, Joe? Uh, 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 I'm glad you mentioned Dean Kane. I was gonna bring the conversation to Dean Kane. Uh, Kane pissed off everyone on Twitter recently. Oh, really? Be- be- oh yeah, because he picked a fight with Seth Rogen over that <laughs> movie American Sniper, and, yeah. he, and he's and he's getting all in on Seth Rogen. It's like you're not American, and he's like, <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, he's Canadian. He's from Vancouver, Dean. And then he's like, well, I didn't see you serve in the army, Mr. Seth Rogen. And Seth Rogen's like, uh, you didn't serve in the army either, Dean Cain. So, yeah. <laughs> so, Dean C- so Dean Cain, the man who was Superman, has been taking the crazy pills and picking a fight with the man who was the Green Hornet. I would have said that, uh, Dean Cain, bring him back on, like, Arrow or The Flash. I know y'all don't watch Arrow, but I, The Flash would be cool, too. Uh, just bring him back. Like, you know, all these old... Like, I, no, I don't they'll know. do a small boat thing where they'll bring back a whole bunch of Superman people to guest star on, like, a role or two, you know? The League of the Superman. He was was in Smallville, eh? He was Vandal Savage in Smallville. Yeah, yeah, I thought that was so cool that he was Vandal Savage. Um, I I want him as a hero now, though, that's why. Or maybe he could pull a villain. I just want him in this new DC TV universe with the Flash and Arrow and Vixen animated series. I always say they should have just had, like, their uh, Supergirl and Titans be with the Arrow and Flash. You know, I... I don't care if it's connected to the movies. I, I already know that. But I, d- Greg Berlanti is doing Supergirl. He should, he's making it. He should be like, all right, it's connected. I think it'll all be up to C- like CBS. And, yeah, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if it's good, and hopefully it's good. As from this stuff you've been saying, it's like, ah, not too exciting. So hopefully it's better than this stuff. Like we're hearing. We can Maybe. dream, son. We can dream. Well, don't forget, it's not Lex Luthor, it's Alexi, so... <laughs> Alexi Lutherovich. Oh. 
<laughs> Where is that? I'm, I'm, Isn't that in the Just in the Multiversity comic? Isn't like Lex Luthor's daughter? Matt, you're reading that, right? Multiversity. Yeah, no, it yeah. was Alexis. Oh, it was Alexis. Alexis. That's what Alexis it was. Cause I remember. Luther. Yeah. It was a hot Alexis, chick. Alexis, that was a porn bald. star. I'm in. <laughs> yeah. I'll, okay. You know how we're gonna know uh, this Alexander? Uh, like, I don't think they say Luther, do they? No. Okay, it's just Alexander, right? So if they if she's bald, then we know she's the daughter. <laughs> <laughs> she's going through chemo to get her legs. Well, that's the crazy thing about uh, Alexis Luther. There, she was bald and she was kind of hot, and she was in a relationship with Damian Wayne. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. And they imply Damian Wayne is actually gay with the Superboy too. At the oh same yeah. Time. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. So, uh, to which again, that's just so Grant Morris was like, and then they knew I'm going to imply that they're gay. Thank you. I'm of Scottish descent, so I like a chance to pull out my Grant Morrison impression every so often. What I don't, what I don't hope for is that if it's not connected, I hope they don't do a spinoff of Supergirl with something else because I don't like. I, I keep it in the Flash and Arrow CW. Like, have another spinoff from that. Do uh, Adam if you want. Do Suicide Squad. I just, I don't want it to keep not being connected to this like this universe right here you know what i mean but but multiverse joe I, multiverse i'm okay therapy. with i'm okay with the movies constantine sure that's fine gotham it's in the past i don't really care about that show anyways <laughs> it's just I, no, I, i'm I, the me, last one me being seen like i'm like i like arrow and i've been campaigning it so that's why i want to keep it in that because i i you know i want to keep it there and that's my rant for now there you go i, I, I have I, to I get it out little... I was going to say, speaking of Gotham, does anyone want to talk about last night's no. episode? But I get the feeling no, I'm the only one who watched it. I didn't watch it. it. It was actually pretty decent. It was I much more... I have self-respect, believe it or not. <laughs> it was much more heavy on the mob side of things this episode, and Electrocutioner uh, gets defeated like the bitch that he is, so that's actually pretty cool. And and they actually spent the money for a Johnny Cash song. They got a really oh, great Johnny Cash nice. song in there uh, in the beginning. And I'm like, oh my god, they got Johnny Cash song money. <laughs> You know what, though? We can look forward to The Flash is on tonight. Back yeah. on. Agent Carter again. The Flash yeah. is back on. Oh, Captain Cold's coming back. Oh, so oh, good. Heat wave. Heat prison wave. break reunion. Hell yeah, man. Oh, that's going to be good. Uh, this prison break reunion so I like that. I know. They've basically gotten every prison break actor to be in this Arrow Flash. They're missing the Puerto Rican, like Sucre. Oh, they'll, they'll, him. they'll find – he'll be the Holy. top. They'll find a role for him. <laughs> no, no, he's Puerto Rican. He'll be Abracadabra is what he'll be. There you go. Let's because Abracadabra uh, isn't white, so there you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm fucking profiling, profiling. But I'm just saying – God damn it, Joe. What, the Flash has ethnically diverse villains. Come on, man. Evil knows no race, no gender, no creed. Oh. Yeah. Fucker, Joel. Stop being so <laughs> racist. <laughs> Something uh, SJ. Something, <laughs> that's the new thing. That, that's the new thing. You're not racist. You're just SJ. But wait, did y'all see uh, the promo pictures real quick before? Like, I probably ending already. Before you see uh, the the pictures for tonight's episode, like where it was Captain Gold and Heat Wave, like back to back, like it's a rap album so or something. Good. It's I was like, like their oh. kid play. Yes, <laughs> I thought that was so cool. It's like they're crisscross. They're gonna jump, jump all over the Flash. Uh, that was so cool. Well. That'll end it nope. for this week, guys. Thank you for joining us for the bottom of the barrel show again. Um, but we, got we don't want to forget. Yeah, we don't want to forget the big thing that's happening again: the podcast awards. Yes, the tenth annual podcast awards are happening right now. It's in the nomination phases. So if you love the comic book has podcast, and we know you do, if you love talks about breakfast and rap albums. Mm -hmm. as they pertain to superheroes <laughs> like we know you do you can go and you can nominate us right now that's the comic book cast all separate words i will leave it in the description of yeah. everywhere you can get this show exactly for for the entertainment category or want to enter and if we make it in the top 10 rest assured we will do a giant push for that so we can get Absolutely. noticed again and all that good stuff and Hey, it's on the Facebook, too, on the main um, CBC Damn Facebook. Right. It's, like, up there. You go in there, you'll see it right there. Oh, I fucking joled hard posting that. Yeah. yeah I, <laughs> but I, don't I, vote I, for us with no link. Herpy <laughs> Well, I've been being sure to remind people every day on Twitter. We, we kind of, like, you know, just stumbled into it last year. We were really touched by the great fan support. They showed out in numbers and actually got us nominated. Mm -hmm. And we actually came really close, I think, to winning. We got beaten by The Walking Dead. 
dead cast. So you know, yeah. it's not, not surprising. And let's take it to are... those damn zombie lovers. And hey, Walking Dead is going downhill, kind of. So there you go. So there you. So it's we been don't gone downhill since that. season two. So. Oh, that's true. But I'm yeah. sure. I, I so, was just happy we didn't lose to the Taylor Swift podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I was really uh, happy about. I never would have lived that shit down. Yeah. So everybody, don't be a racist. Nominate us. Yes. Yeah, we're well, the more <laughs> we're the most culturally diverse. I mean, got a Canadian, an Australian, a Mexican, a Bosnian. If you don't vote for us, you're racist. Well, we, we, you know, we really <laughs> could play. We could play the race and culture card because we are probably one of the most culturally yeah. diverse podcasts. We have a on. British guy. We have a black guy. Which I don't. I think you just say a ghetto. <laughs> you hood. <laughs> Joe said own. enough. We have a couple guys actually, which is great. Yeah. Whoa, we, whoa, we, have, we, got, we got a couple guys. Are are Richard and, yeah, and another, Tom too? Like dating the British? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have a couple of guys. Wow, the wrestling British. podcast has really gone somewhere else since I've been on there. I've heard dating. rumors. I, I've heard rumors that there's a woman on the anime podcast too. Plus, Shay is on this show too. So there you go. So diverse. Dude, there yeah. are only rumors. There are only rumors. <laughs> <laughs> we have our own like tabloid thing. <laughs> Where it's like the rumor is like they have women on the podcast now. I've heard (laughs) legends written on the scrolls of Ric Flair. The rumor is Sean went on World Star again. Uh, (laughs) That's a fact. Yeah, I was going to say, it's not a rumor when it's true. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) So thanks for listening, everybody, is what we're trying to say. Yeah. Do you love the Comic Book Cast podcast? Do you love Blood Sweat Comics, Scoop Slam, and Operation Otaku? If so, then Christmas came early for you this year because all of those great shows, plus discussions and movie commentaries, are now available via SoundCloud. That means all of your favorite Comic Book Cast content now in the finest audio possible, uncompressed the way it was meant to be. With SoundCloud, downloading your favorite podcast is as easy as can be. Carry it around with you wherever you go. Even access it on your phone and tablet. With SoundCloud, you're never too far from Bane Dick, Crane Dad, Ghost Leary, Joe Cushada, and all your other favorites.